Spectre and Meltdown security vulnerabilities. These have been known for quite a while now, and there's been patches and also updates that have been out there in the wild that have in some cases significantly affected servers, but when we initially tested it here on the channel quite a while ago, it didn't really affect performance at all, and I told people not to really worry about it. But recently when I was doing a Xeon build, a whole setup for a cheap price, and I overclocked the old X3450 CPU, which is four cores, eight threads. I noticed that when I was running a Firestrike benchmark, the physics score was significantly low, especially at these clock speeds, and especially when I had the memory at a decent speed. Because I remember literally like three years ago, I'd built something similar where I'd put an X3450 or an X3470 or something like that, and the physics score was around about 10,000 points. And so I was left scratching my head when I saw this result when I was doing this build because it was a significant drop in performance. And so the solution straight away, I thought, okay, maybe it's this Spectre and Meltdown stuff. So I went onto the Gibson's research website and they've got a little executable you can download, which essentially if you run it as administrator, you can then disable the Spectre and Meltdown updates via the Windows 10 operating system. And then if you restart your system, you will be exposed to these vulnerabilities, but we'll talk about that later because we're gonna take a look at the performance before and after with the X3450 versus the Ryzen 5 1400. And because I did both two builds with pretty much the exact same graphics card, the RX 580, I decided to test both these setups with these patches enabled and disabled. And in the case of the Ryzen, I actually couldn't disable one of the updates, that's the Spectre. It could only allow me to disable the Meltdown update, but we'll show you guys the results anyway. And we're also gonna throw in a 9900K at five gigahertz with an RTX 2080 Ti to see if there's any differences all these months later, as opposed to when we originally tested. And what we saw here first off with Grand Theft Auto 5 was the performance on the Xeon was actually significantly affected to the tune of around 10% performance. And so disabling the Spectre and Meltdown updates saw that we got better average FPS, better 1% and 0.1% lows. The Ryzen 5 1400, it basically made no difference. And then the 9900K, when we tested this at 4K, because if we tested it at lower resolutions, it essentially breaks the engine in GTA 5. We saw virtually no difference in FPS there either. Moving over to Dota 2, it was a similar trend as GTA 5, where disabling these patches on the X3450Z on at 4 gigahertz, saw us get an uplift of nearly 10%, just like GTA 5 yet again. And then the Ryzen 5 1400 and also the 9900K weren't really affected, though there was a slight difference on the 9900K, but it wasn't as big as the X3450Z on. Moving over to Battlefield 5 on a 64 player man server, this will have a little bit of variance, but one thing I did notice with the Xeon here was that the 0.1% lows were nearly doubled when we disabled these patches, as opposed to the average FPS where there wasn't really a difference on all three CPUs. And this was tested at DX12. And then when we move over to F1 2019, this was tested at 1080p on all three CPUs. And what we saw here was virtually no difference between all three configurations. So my thinking is that the DX12 API definitely helps out with FPS. It utilizes your CPU better, but it also isn't really affected by the Spectre and Meltdown patches because of the way the API works. But what we saw with the Firestrike's physics score was the best telltale sign that we were losing performance significantly on the Xeon versus the 9900K, which actually still lost a little bit of performance near the tune of 5%. And then on the Ryzen 5 1400, that virtually lost no performance whatsoever. So coming out of these results, I'm personally disappointed because I love the older used hardware. And it seems like these patches are affecting the performance of older hardware more significantly than they're affecting the newer stuff. And I just came off the back of testing X58 where I didn't disable those Spectrum Meltdown patches. So now for me personally, I wanna go back and retest that X58 system versus the latest and greatest. You guys have also requested that I test that with the 5700 XT, something more real world than a 2080 Ti. So if you want that comparison to happen, let us know in the comments section below. But moving forward for me personally, I'm going to be disabling the Spectrum Meltdown patches on pretty much every gaming PC I do now in relation to Xeons and older i5s and i7s and stuff like that, because I believe the performance is significant and it's going to affect your gaming experience. But not only that, 
there hasn't been one reported case of spectrum meltdown patches affecting an average individual where they've lost sensitive data out there in the wild. We've only really seen academic proof that these security vulnerabilities pose a risk to someone hacking your data. But also some things that I find really odd about these security vulnerabilities is that apparently the eighth and ninth gen CPUs are immune to the latest exploit that was found. And that's microarchitectural data sampling, AKA MDS. When Intel broke this themselves, the news on this, they said that there was another vulnerability that could affect their CPUs and especially older CPUs. And we've seen things like motherboard manufacturers releasing micro code updates as well from Sandy Bridge processors, that's something like an i7-2600 and upwards. But here's where things start to get even more odd for me personally is that when the 8th gen and 9th gen CPUs, especially 8th gen, when that was being designed, they wouldn't have been aware of the discoveries of Spectre and Meltdowns. So the irony of 8th and 9th gen CPUs being immune to this latest exploit is a little bit convenient. But moving more into the depths of shaky territory, apparently Intel's hyper-threading is also a security vulnerability as well, where Google's Chrome OS has even implemented an update to disable hyper-threading whilst using that browser. And that's something they've left as a staple when it comes to using Chrome and browsing the internet. So Google definitely thinks that this is a significant vulnerability to Intel CPUs. Then when we look at other opinions out there, it seems to be that people say that this is a huge risk some say this is not a big risk. All the research I've done seems to point to the fact that these are local attacks and the vulnerabilities mainly apply to people who have access to a virtual network or something over the lines of direct access to your computer or a local area network. And for me personally, if someone came to my house and tried to hack my computer, they would have to get through an additional firewall which consists of a human being holding a baseball bat. But with all the he say and she say aside, I can only break things down for you with facts. And what I've seen here is a performance decrease. And this is not just my machine. Every system with Windows 10 carrying an older Xeon or an older Intel CPU is going to be affected by these patches. Yet there hasn't been one reported case of someone losing sensitive data to these security vulnerabilities. And what we're seeing from an aggregate point of view here is worldwide a massive drop in performance, especially on older used Intel CPUs, which also happen to be extremely good value for money on the used hardware market. Take for instance that X3450, four cores, eight threads, overclockable, currently going on AliExpress for 11 bucks. The fact that it just so happens to affect this CPU more than it affects the newer Ryzen and Intel CPUs makes me wonder what these patches really were intended for and it leaves me scratching my head where from here on in I'm going to be quite simply opting for the BIOS update without the micro code patch update and also disabling Spectre and Meltdown patches in my Windows 10 systems because I believe it'll allow your system to have a better gaming experience. Anyway guys with that aside if you enjoyed today's video then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know what you think in the comment section below about the Spectre and Meltdown patches, AKA the attack on Xeon patches. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell. There's some more juicy tech content coming your way and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.